So it comes as no surprise that the phenomenal success of the smash hit Vampire Survivors brought with it a torrent of mobile clones, so much so that the developers of that game had to release the mobile port of the game early, but now comes Legion of Doom, a reverse bullet hell switch game which aims to cater to fans of the genre and temporarily fill the void that an official switch port of Vampire Survivors is yet to fill. But the question is, does it offer the same addictive gameplay loop and replayability factor, and is it worth your time and cash? Well hit that like button, subscribe for more Nintendo Switch reviews and content, and let's find out. So as expected then, no story with this one, so let's just get straight into the gameplay. And if you've played Vampire Survivors, there are plenty of parallels to be drawn between the two. However, let me say right now that I thought that Legion of Doom did do enough to stand out on its own without feeling like a complete copycat. And to start with, let's talk about the characters. Now, Vampire Survivors is known for its huge cast of playable characters, the majority of which are unlocked by completing challenges or discovering them through unlocking secrets. However, Legion of Doom only contains five playable characters, which, aside from the Kratos looking barbarian, must be unlocked through using gold earned in levels. But these include the Arcanic Alchemist, the Nimble Rogue, the Saintly Priest, and the Vile Necromancer. Like Vampire Survivors, these all come with their own unique starter weapons and stats, including attack speed, damage and movement speed, and you may be thinking that that's quite a meagre selection on offer. However, unlike Vampire Survivors, they also come with their own unique pool of weapon upgrades, as well as a special ability that you can activate, which is essentially your oh shit button, I'm about to die, and this is charged as you kill enemies and can really get you out of a pickle. In addition to this, there are also a selection of traits that you can unlock with gold, which act as both a blessing and a curse, increasing some stats whilst reducing others. And any one of these can actually be applied to any of the game's characters, which does change things up a bit and definitely helps to add some additional variety to the mix. Now, similarly, the selection of levels on offer in this one is significantly smaller, with a total of three to choose from. The first being a field level, similar to the first level in Vampire Survivors, with the other two being a lava lake, which limits you to a horizontal scrolling island, and a dungeon containing traps for you to activate. And I'd say that the levels are just okay in my opinion. Too few options to choose from, and unfortunately they're not limitless. They each have a border which restricts the play area, or in the case of the field and lava levels, one which instantly kills you if you run into it. And one additional minor gripe I had is that it's often hard to tell which environmental sprites are solid and which you can actually run right over, and the collision boxes on these are excessively large. Now when it comes to the basic gameplay mechanics, there's very little to explain, but for those of you that haven't yet played a reverse bullet hell game, it basically has you trying to survive for as long as possible whilst being besieged by a constant stream of enemies, you drop crystals on death which reward you with XP and level you up. And you also earn gold which can then be spent to unlock characters, traits and permanent passive upgrades, including everything from health and damage upgrades, to life regen, additional projectiles, resurrections and a feature unique to this game, void portals, which appear at random in levels and apply peculiar effects when they're activated. Each time you level up though, you'll get to select from a variety of offensive abilities, which you can hold 6 to begin with, but more later on, or passive perks which increase things like your health, damage, defense, attack speed and crit chance. But unlike Vampire Survivors, like I said, each character comes with its own unique set of abilities, which admittedly do contain several skills which are basically identical, but use different sprites but many of them are also character specific ones which give each of them a unique playstyle, with the alchemist having several AoE skills, the rogue's ability is poisoning enemies, and the necromancer losing health over time but draining enemy life when he kills them and having the ability to summon minions, though I will say that due to his health degen, he's pretty much impossible to play without the right permanent upgrades. 
Once you've acquired an ability though, you'll start to see upgrades for them appearing as you level up, with each ability having multiple upgrades for things like its damage, number of projectiles, area of effect and cooldown. And while I appreciated how these gave you more options build-wise, I kind of felt like the sheer number of them diluted the upgrade pool to the extent that it was really hard to focus in on a particular ability, and none of the skills actually come with evolutions, so once you've equipped them all, you've pretty much seen everything that they have to offer. It's also worth noting at this point that Legion of Doom also features a two-player local co-op option, something which Vampire Survivors doesn't have, but unfortunately being the loner that I am, I wasn't able to play this one to give my opinions on it, but it's certainly a welcome addition. The final thing which sets this one apart though from Vampire Survivors is the build menu, which allows you to construct various traps and totems to freeze or damage enemies, or heal or protect yourself, and I thought this was a neat little addition. However, any value it has quickly falls off once you obtain a few of the more powerful permanent upgrades, and due to the game having no instructions, I didn't actually discover this feature until way too late and I no longer had a requirement for it. Overall though, I thought that the abilities brought some nice variety, giving each of the characters distinct enough playstyles to make switching between them every now and then feel as refreshing as playing around with a different build in Vampire Survivors. There's that same satisfying feeling once you've got the ball rolling with them, where they're popping off all over the place and destroying enemies left, right and centre, and the building mechanics definitely add a little extra strategy to the runs, at least in the early game. Now, that is essentially everything there is to know about gameplay. It's pretty simple stuff, just kill enemies, level up and upgrade your perks, and try not to die. So, being a fan of Vampire Survivors, how did I find it? Well, the game definitely has that addictive one more try feel to it, which makes you want to just dive back in for another run whenever you die, and I enjoyed experimenting with the different characters and talents. However, each run takes about 40 seconds to load, which does become extremely tiresome, and this is only compounded by a really poor difficulty curve, with the early game seeing you're lucky enough to survive beyond 2 or 3 minutes, while purchasing a few select permanent upgrades will have you waltzing your way beyond the 15 minute mark with very little effort, and to me this is definitely the game's biggest weakness. I found my first couple of hours with the game to be overly frustrating due to me unable to come up with a build which could actually handle the onslaught of enemies coming my way, and it initially seemed like movement speed and defence played a much bigger role in Legion of Doom, as right from the get go enemies did way too much damage when they touched you, and there were not enough ways to recover health. However, once I picked up that choice selection of upgrades, the rest of them became irrelevant, there was no real challenge to any of the runs, and for some reason they appear to end at random, with there being no specific criteria for success. Now when it comes to the enemies, as you'd expect, the generic monster sprites, which to be honest all look pretty decent, and include the odd ranged enemy to deal with, and there are also bosses which unfortunately are just larger enemies with more health, but which drop chests and gold containing upgrades. But unlike Vampire Survivors, which had you constantly clock watching to see when the next wave would appear or when a boss would spawn, new enemy variants and bosses in this game appear at completely illogical time intervals, and the movement patterns are very inconsistent, with them often sidestepping to block your path or moving faster once they gain close, which if you've got a slow moving character is basically a death sentence as there's no way to actually escape them. Finally, the game suffers from a severe lack of accumulative progression, and overall I feel there's just not enough content in it to have you playing for an extended amount of time. It took me around 2 or 3 hours to unlock all of the characters, talents and the overpowered upgrades I've mentioned, but after that, the only thing really left to do was to complete the challenges which just rewarded you with some extra gold, and grind away to unlock the rest of the upgrades which, like I mentioned, by that point ended up being rather irrelevant. When all said and done though, Legion of Doom really isn't a bad little title, and while it definitely has its issues when it comes to balancing, it certainly scratches that itch and shows that a Vampire Survivors port is definitely a possibility. 
However, it also validated one major concern I have, that being how well a port would actually perform on the Switch. Now, as you can see from the visuals, there's nothing overly complex about them. Everything is 2D and sprite based. And for the most part, the sprite work and environments look pretty decent and the game performs quite well to begin with, with no major issues. However, as you get more towards the end game and that enemy count starts to ramp up, the frame rate basically goes to shit and the game becomes unplayable, especially whilst playing as the necromancer and summoning in extra minions. So optimization is undoubtedly going to be the biggest challenge when it comes to a switch port of vampire survivors. On the audio side of things, Legion of Doom sounds pretty good. We get some nice punchy sound effects for the abilities which help to accentuate that feeling of growing power as you blow up groups of enemies with them. And the soundtrack isn't too bad either, though it does contain a weird mixture of synthwave and thumping electronica tunes, which don't get me wrong, work quite well for the gameplay, but really lack the originality of the awesome Vampire Survivors soundtrack. So in conclusion, if you've been looking for something to tide you over until the possibility of a Vampire Survivors port becomes a reality, Legions of Doom is definitely a viable, albeit a temporary, alternative. It puts an interesting twist on the original formula with its unique character loadouts and building mechanics, its two player mode should make for a great cooperative experience, and while it doesn't quite have the staying power of its influencer due to a lack of content and admittedly its gameplay suffers a little from those balancing issues, I can't deny that I had a decent amount of fun with this one, and for about 7 hours worth of gameplay, I'd definitely say that the asking price isn't too bad. And so when it comes down to my own personal rating of this one, I'm going to be giving Legion of Doom 3 out of 5 stars. Legion of Doom is definitely the closest you're going to get to a Vampire Survivors port on the Switch for now, and despite its issues, I'd say that if it's your first experience with the genre, or even if you're a veteran, in my opinion, it's still well worth giving a go. With that said though, do let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one, especially if like me you're a massive Vampire Survivors fan and decided to pick it up. Let me know how you found it and what you enjoyed or didn't enjoy about it. As always though, if this review helped you out, drop a like to show your appreciation and consider subscribing to the channel for more reviews on the best and worst of what the Switch has to offer. But for now, thank you all once again for watching, take care of yourselves, and game on.